I'm Max Sterling, welcome to LARPgasm. Today I'm going to work on my primary weapon for my Dystopia Rising character. Now I'm playing a heavily sports-influenced Yorker thug character, so pretty much made the easiest character I could think of uh, that fits my area. I think it's going to work out really well. Now the weapon I'm going to make, because it's sports-related, is a baseball bat. Now I looked online to see if I could find a latex equivalent or a Kalamazoo version, and uh, Sure, there are some pretty awesome looking baseball bats for sale online, and they're not even that expensive. The problem is they're super small. They're like 32 inches or 36 inches. They're very tiny. Um, I, I don't want a fucking fish club, you know? I, I'm, I'm trying to get a baseball bat. Baseball bats are like 42 inches long, so I'm gonna make my own. I'm gonna use a pole noodle, uh, some PVC pipe, and we're gonna make an old school boffer and we're gonna make it look like a baseball bat. Now I wish I had a lathe so I could just spin this thing around and make it real easy and have it looking real good and then you know plasti dip it and stuff but I don't. I'm gonna have to hand carve this and time is of the essence so I just bought some wood grain duct tape and I'm gonna duct tape this thing. So it's gonna be your real basic level boffer and uh, it'll be nice and safe and uh, I'm gonna make it old school the way I used to at LARPs when I very first started. So. What we did back in the day was we'd get some PVC or CPVC pipe and we get the pipe insulation that goes over it, 5 eighths inch thick, which you don't really sell anymore, and then we would just, you know, stick it inside. All the way. Oh, no, just a little bit. Alright, so anyways, <clears throat> that's how we'd make them. They, they stopped selling this stuff, so then you kind of had to buy, like, pool noodles to do this. So that's what I'm going to use today as pool noodles because I'm saving all this stuff for sort of like a rainy day. Now this pipe I have here uh, is not long enough, but because I'm an avid LARPer, I have a whole pile of shit laying here, old weapons and whatnot. And I have a bunch of pipe from uh, back in the day that I've never used. Now this is much longer than I need. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure this out a few inches shorter than what I'll need because I want to have room to put open cell foam on both sides to keep it nice and safe. So if I'm going to make say like a 42 inch weapon, then I'm going to want to cut this like, I would say between 39 and like 41, depending on what your requirements are for your LARP. So I'll probably cut this at 40 uh, and we'll see, or maybe even a little bit less, but just make sure you leave enough space to have all the foam that you need. So. All you need to do is just make a mark where you want to cut, and then you can use a handsaw, a hacksaw, a pipe cutter, scissors, a knife, karate to kick it, uh, burn it. I'm going to use the bandsaw because it's super simple, but whatever you got to do to cut this pipe down. And uh, that's going to be the first step. So let me do that real quick. So now once you cut this, you may end up with some jagged, uneven edges. I actually had to cut this with a handsaw because I couldn't get it to... Uh, through the band saw, but that's okay. So what you go do now is get sandpaper uh, or a sanding block or you know, rub this on a concrete wall. Whatever you gotta do to get it nice and flat and even. I'm actually use my grinding wheel. Uh, but I realize not everyone has one. Dremel will also work. File these down, file that flat. And uh, you know, if you have end caps, you may wanna put an end cap on there, uh, you know, just to make it super safe. But let me go ahead and file this down real quick. Okay, so now we got this nice and smooth, fairly even on top. And then the next step is to uh, basically start carving. Now, if you were using, you know, driveway markers and shit like that, you got to do a bunch of taping. You might have to use glue and all kinds of, you know, whacked out shit. And that's fine if you want to build one that way. But for me, all I'm going to have to do is go get my pole noodle over there. We're going to slide it on because they fit so tight already you don't have to really glue them. I mean, if you don't want to, but slip that on there and then make some marks and start carving. So let me go ahead and get this pool noodle on here. Okay, so into the pool noodle. And I have to figure out where exactly we want our grip to be. Now, baseball bats don't really have a lot on the bottom. They do have a pretty good sized grip because you want to be able to put two hands on it. I'm only using mine one-handed though, so my grip doesn't have to be that big. I'm gonna leave a little bit extra space than I normally would, <clears throat> but that's pretty much it, right about there. 
So I'm going to make a mark with a marker. And I'm going to know that that is where this needs to taper down basically to the pipe. And then I'll wrap some actual grip tape around there. But then from there, it'll flare out the whole way to the end to where it actually becomes the baseball bat. I hope you're following me so far. I don't think any of this, you know, is too complex. So I went ahead and marked my pull noodle. Now if you have scissors, you can just cut this. I mean, you could use a saw or whatever you want to. Um, I couldn't find scissors, so I guess I'm gonna use whatever the fuck these are, pruning shears. <laughs> and we're gonna cut this. <laughs> And then now we got this pool noodle cut to size. Save the excess for next time. All right, so. Went ahead and got this cut down to size. You can see I left some space at the end open to put some open cell foam in. Even though you're not allowed to thrust, just in case I would happen to catch someone at the end of this, there'll be plenty of space. Uh, down the bottom, I'll put some open cell foam too, so there's plenty of space. But this is pretty much, you know, where we're starting with. Um, if you had baby hands, you could probably get two hands on here. But like I said, this is meant as a one-handed weapon. Uh, it's going to look like a baseball bat, but if you tried to put two hands on it then you'll realize it's not exactly and I think I'm actually gonna make it a little bit longer because of Dystopia Rising their weapon lengths kind of overlap a little bit so I'm not gonna make this you know like 50 you know or 53 inches long I'm gonna make it you know just a little bit over 40 so it would be considered a uh, large weapon I believe okay so let's get started like I said if this isn't fat enough then I'm gonna take this pull noodle here. <clears throat> that's a secret project. You're not, not allowed to see my bone dagger. That's a secret project for later. But I have this fat pull noodle and this one actually fits inside of there. And then I can actually thicken it up if I need to. So I should see if I have an actual baseball bat for uh, reference. I think I do. So I actually found the uh, baseball bat I made back in the day. Now this thing is actually heavy as shit. It's solid oak, I believe. Um, <laughs> yeah, you'll have to excuse this bat. Um, now this bat's only 32 inches long, but it's very heavy. Um, but when I made this back in the day, I didn't really make it to play baseball, if you know what I mean. So, this is going to be a good point of reference though. It gives me sort of the slope. Uh, mine's just going to be, you know, about a foot longer. So let me go ahead and uh, use this as a reference, start shaving down that foam. All right, so what I'm doing here is even though that pool noodle is a very tight fit on this, uh, taping the end of it's, you know, never going to hurt as far as safety is concerned. And also, I really want it to be the tightest fit possible. That's what she said. So we're gonna put a little bit of tape every so often on this pipe. So that way, whenever I slip it inside, you know, it really stays in place. Now, I'll probably also hit this up with some Super 77, even though I don't think it's necessary. That'll just really stop it from moving around. Uh, that Super 77 sets really quick. But initially, it'll act as a lubricant, so as long as I slide it in real quick, then it'll stay in place once it's in there. This will be a lot thicker than a baseball bat, but that's fine. This needs to be safe. This needs to be unsafe. So, ideally, by the time I get down to the handle, I don't want it to be any less than 5 eighths of an inch thick. So basically, this pull noodle until it gets right to the handle and then tapers off pretty quick. So the next step is going to be taking this. I'm going to use this as a reference and basically draw myself where the thickness should start tapering and then put a few marks and then start carving. I'll probably use an electric knife for that. I may use my grinding wheel uh, or I may just use a knife. We'll have to see. 
but the idea is to get this tube shaped like this. So I decide this is the winner. If you saw my Dragon Throne video, then this is what I'm going to use to shave this foam down. And uh, hopefully it works out okay. So, as I said, I used my real baseball bat as a point of reference. So I left a little bit extra on the end. And then basically every so many inches, you're gonna make a mark. And this, you're gonna use as basically your depth gauge. So you're gonna go a little bit more deeper each mark you get to until by the time you get to the final mark, you should be almost flush with the pipe because for the handle, we're gonna use just the pipe itself. So that's the idea. Let's go ahead and get started carving. Uh, I'm one of those uh, measure once, cut once type of people. So this will either come out or it won't. And uh, I don't have any more of this uh, pool noodle action back here. So we have one take. So let's do it right. I'm gonna leave it on the pipe while I do this because it'll give it uh, a degree of structure and should make it easier to cut. So I'm gonna do from the bottom out because I think that that'll be easier than trying to just randomly uh, guess a depth and come down. So what I'll do is I'll probably start out here and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine marks. So by the time I get to one, two, three, four, five. So by the time we get to this fifth mark, I'm going to want to be halfway through. So basically I want to see uh, just the edge of the green by the time I get to that fifth mark. So if I really wanted to, I could do this in sections. I could just count up one, two, three, four, five, and I could cut down to the green right here. So I know where I'm trying to go to, but <clears throat> I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna try to do in one fell swoop. Now, this is going to be done in sections. So when it comes out, it's gonna be more like uh, an octagon or a hexagonal shape because it's gonna have edges on it. What we're gonna do from there is I'll probably take it over to the grinding wheel and hit those edges, or I may use the knife and get those edges and give it more of a rounded look. Then I'll take sandpaper, put it in the palm of my hand, and just, you know what I'm talking about? You all know the action. And we're just gonna do that till it's nice and smooth, and uh, then it will be time to tape it. All right, let's go ahead and get this started here. <laughs> you wanna take bets I lose a finger? All right, so you get the point. I specifically did two different colors so I could help myself gauge the depth. So, from here you get the point. If you're doing this free-handed, you got some big balls. I would probably not suggest doing this the way that I'm doing it. Um, but I am a professional, so if you try this at home, that's on you. All right, let's go ahead and continue on. So I think I've gotten as far as I'm going to get with the grinding wheel on this. The rest of it's going to have to be done by hand and it's going to be tedious and take some time, but the big stuff is done. Uh, just like that knife, the grinding wheel is very unforgiving. So if you're going to do that, you know, be prepared for errors. I have a lot of experience doing stuff like this, so I have a pretty light touch, but if you're going to start right into it, I suggest probably doing like a practice run first. Definitely wear something because you're going to get foam dust all over your shirt, maybe wear a mask, some goggles, or some glasses, just for safety. So this is the part where if you were ever a male growing up, it comes into handy, or if you spend time with Bobby in the back of his Trans Am after the football game, you're gonna know what I'm talking about. The sandpaper in your hand, wrap it around firmly, hold it,
start with a nice coarse grit, but you can see just those couple of strokes, man, that's already helped this thing out immensely. If you don't want to do it that way, you can also do it like this, but you might get flat spots. I always suggest firmly gripping the shaft and working it from top to bottom. So is it perfect? No. Is it safe? Yes. Uh, once we get the wood grain tape on there, that wood grains will help camouflage imperfections. So I think in the end it's going to look real good. I'm going to work on this just a little bit more, but uh, be careful not to get overly obsessed with getting it perfectly smooth. Um, it'd probably be very, very hard to get this exactly spot on. Uh, but keep in mind, it's post-apocalyptic. The bat should probably be fucked up from hitting stuff. So if it's not exactly right, that's probably actually a better thing. So don't get too obsessive over it if you're making a weapon like this. Go take the heat gun and just go over real quick to get all these little fuzzies to lay down. Uh, and then we're gonna start taping it. Taping's super easy. Just lay down a piece of tape, go top to bottom. From the bottom, just gonna cut a little piece of foam. Uh, it shouldn't be too complicated. I'll use some of these scraps I have, but I'll show you that too when I get to that part. All right, so turn that up real nice and hot. You get all those little fuzzies burned off of there. That way your tape will adhere to this thing much better. This would be the time to uh, apply whatever glue I need to put on here to hold this on and uh, hold these little things here down. And then right after that, start taping. So I picked up this roll of duct tape from Five Below. It's wood grain, like I said, this will help camouflage any imperfections. If I was just taping it black or brown or something, for one thing, it wouldn't look right. And for two, it's gonna show these imperfections a lot more. So we're gonna use wood grain. We're gonna start at the top. We're gonna run one layer down this thing, down into the handle, and uh, stop there. So here's my baseball bat. Measures about 43 inches. And uh, it's good for one-handed or I can use it two-handed. So depending on how I want to do it. It is a lot heavier than I really kind of wanted it to be, but it's good deterrent. Might stop other people from wanting to run off with it and use it. Uh, I'm a pretty tough guy, so you know, to me, this isn't really that bad. Uh, but like I said, I can use two-handed if I want to, one-handed. Plan on fighting with my combat knife and this, so doing Florentine act. But uh, yeah, I had everything I needed. Uh, the tape was $4. Uh, the pool noodles, if I had to buy them, would have been $2. The pipe itself would have been probably $3. So for this project, you're looking at maybe $7 and a little bit of your time as compared to buying one off someone else. Uh, maybe spending 40 or 50 or buying a latex one for like, 80 or 90 or more. So, if you're going to a LARP and you're not sure if you're gonna like it or not, this is the way to go. It's gonna save you a lot of money building a weapon like that as opposed to buying one somewhere. Uh, and hopefully this video helps you out. If you enjoyed the video, please click like. Please subscribe to my channel. I have all kinds of builds like this. Plenty of awesome content that'll be coming down the line and plenty of content that's already up if you haven't seen it. Be sure to click the little bell if you want notifications of when I have new videos which is weekly, and uh, as always, adventure on. Would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. I'd fuck me hard. I'd fuck me so hard. Oh, hey. I know sometimes these videos can get a little bit long and drawn out, but you know what? It's better to have too much information than not enough of them.